Hey everybody, welcome to the Happy Harvest Homestead. Today, let's talk about my reasoning behind the design I chose for our most recent meat rabbit colony. I know it looks beautiful and rustic and professional and awesome and amazing. I love this colony so much. So it might be hard to believe that every single piece of this colony was foraged, so to speak, from scrap we had lying around the farmyard. I stole some pallets from the goat barn, used some extra boards we found as we were cleaning out our garage, and yet again I repurposed these cattle panels with wire mesh on them. They were originally meant to be a mobile pasture colony for our rabbit kits, but they've ended up being super useful as goat pens and part of a chicken fence, and now a colony fence. I guess if we're going to talk about the colony design, I should start at the beginning, which is the location. I chose this location purely for the convenience of it. We had some old chicken brooders here that I ripped out and replaced with this colony that's kind of of similar size. I was having trouble figuring out the perfect place to put this colony. I need it to be kind of close to the other rabbits and close to the barn where we get the hay and the grain and close to a water source, and this location fulfills all those requirements. We actually have two sources of water right by the colony, and we are fairly close to the barn, and I already traverse this way regularly doing other animal chores, so it's not like I have to walk in an opposite direction to do the colony chores. My only complaint with the location is that it is south-facing. Usually, south-facing is a good thing if you're growing a garden or you have a greenhouse, or maybe you want natural lighting in your own house, but for rabbits who overheat very easily, so much so that they will stop breeding during the summertime, having a south-facing colony that gets maximum sunlight is not the best thing. But this is the only flat surface that is near everything that I could find, and I can always build a few shade structures later on if it turns out to be a huge problem. Now, I'm not completely done building the colony. It is serviceable and like able to contain rabbits properly, but I have a whole bunch of cool ideas for like multiple levels and fun hidey houses and like see-through nest boxes and like some pretty fun things I want to try. But those are more like a fun project and not like a need to do right now project. And now that we're approaching spring and there's a whole bunch of other stuff we have to do in addition to the regular chores, I'm not sure how soon I'll be able to complete my ideas, but just know it's not completely finished yet. But my favorite part of the colony is completely finished, and that is the flooring. I have tried many different types of colony floors over the years, some of which I liked okay, some of which I loved, some of which I absolutely hated. For example, putting a whole bunch of rabbits on a piece of pasture that has very soft soil with no digging prevention at all, is a very bad idea. That was our first ever test colony, and they almost dug out like three or four times in as many days. So obviously, I've tried having rabbits straight on the grass. I've tried dirt floors, which they also would dig out of. I've tried deep bedding with wire underneath, which was better, but still had a lot of problems, one of which was the expense of buying such vast quantities of bedding. But one time, in one of my colony setups, I accidentally struck gold in having a solid wood floor. No wire, no dirt, and I ended up putting linoleum on top, but that wasn't necessary. I did mess it up by putting bedding on top, but even then, it was my absolute favorite setup. Except for that, my rabbits couldn't dig burrows, and get all the benefits of burrowing, so I tried dirt floors and deep bedding and stuff again, much to my eventual detriment. So now, after exhausting all the possibilities of letting rabbits dig burrows, I've now decided that burrows are overrated, and the possible benefits I would get from letting them dig burrows does not compare at all to all the troubles I've had with rabbits not digging properly, or digging in the wrong places, or digging up like mold and eating the mold or just all this weird stuff happening that most people who let the rabbits dig burrows don't seem to have problems with. But for whatever reason, my rabbits are special and get into all this mischief and problems. 
So I went back to my favorite style of flooring, just a solid wood floor that I can either once a day or twice a day or however many times I want. I can just sweep up all the poop and all the spilled feed and all the hay, just sweep it off. I don't need to buy expensive bedding. I don't have to spend hours shoveling out dirty bedding all the time. It's just a once a day simple sweep. It is by far my favorite ever floor setup I've ever had. The only problem is they can't dig burrows, but at this point I don't really care that much anymore. Now the floor was very intentional. I did have other options when I was foraging around for materials. I could have done a wire floor with bedding, but I chose not to. But the wire walls were pure happenstance. We do have other materials like pallets or stuff I could have used, but these wire walls were the easiest option I had, and I actually have ended up liking them a whole lot. The wire walls are super great because you can get so much airflow in with the rabbits. The place we had all our other colonies, which was the barn, it had pretty good airflow, but it wasn't like complete, especially in the summertime, it'd get really hot. And while obviously it's not very hot now, we do have some unusually warm days where it's in the 50s and 60s, but the rabbits can easily catch any little bit of breeze they want because everything is so open to the wind. I also like it because it's super easy to just walk by and see your beautiful, healthy, happy rabbits being happy in the colony you've made for them. And every time I walk by, I just, it melts my little heart. I'm just so happy for them. But with the vast potential for airflow, there's also vast potential for not only a lot of sunlight, but also rain and snow and super windy, windy days where it's cold and windy, which can all cause a lot of problems. And as you can see, my way for remedying that is to provide them with lots of hidey houses and nest boxes. Again, this isn't my final design, and things are definitely going to change and improve, but for now, this is working really well. We have nest boxes with bedding in the bottom, you know, to absorb the pee and poo that they inevitably will produce. Then we have other totes and tubs that don't have a bottom that I can just lift up and sweep underneath. We have big ones for rabbits to snuggle in if it's cold, but we have a wide variety of different ones so that if someone is being picked on and they don't want to be with a mean rabbit they can hide by themselves and I've made sure to place all of these hidey houses strategically so they are away from the walls so that no rabbit can use a hidey house as a stepping stool to jump out of the colony. I do plan on eventually adding more wire to the top so that jumping out is less of an issue but for now I just have to be extra vigilant. Something else I didn't think of with this colony that I actually really like is this little wooden place where I can have this little shelf. All the time I find myself being outside the colony and I'll just set, you know, a water jug on the shelf and then I have both hands free to open the door and then close the door. Then I can just reach over again and pour the water or something like that. In my previous colonies, I didn't have a shelf of any sort. And I would always be carrying something bulky or heavy in one hand and then trying to maneuver the door open and close with the other hand. And, and it was a lot harder than just having this nice little shelf where you can deposit your load and have both hands free to open and close the doors. Especially when all the rabbits run up to you and try to squeeze between your legs and escape as you open the door. Something else I really love about this colony that I didn't think about really was having it right up next to the chicken coop. Not only is this a free and cheap natural wall, but it's also a wooden wall that I can screw things into to make multiple stories or layers, or I can hang things, whereas all the rest of the walls are wire and you can't really do that. So I kind of get the best of both worlds, having a little bit of solid wall so I can do a bunch of fun things, but then also have the rest of the walls wire so that they can get all the benefits of airflow. At this point, some people may be concerned about my open air approach and worried that birds of prey could swoop down and grab a rabbit or two and take advantage of my open air system. Well, thank you for worrying about me and my farm and my rabbits. I appreciate that. But let me put your fears to rest that we don't seem to have many problems with birds of prey at all. We used to free range our chickens for a long while and 
I've had open air colonies before with our pasture pen and, and things like that. And I'm not sure if it's because we're far away from the woods or we are close to a big structure like the barn or if our goats or dogs scare them away or we are just blessed by providence. But we have never had an issue with aerial predators and I don't really expect all of a sudden to have a problem now. If anything, the bird would fly right past the rabbits and grab the much bigger and slower chickens right next door, which they haven't done so far, so I would think the same would apply to rabbits. This same philosophy also carries over to land-dwelling predators. We have two livestock guardian dogs that do a great job of guarding the livestock, even though sometimes they think the livestock is more something to play with or chew on than protect. As long as we keep them separate from the animals, they can still mark their scent and patrol and keep everyone safe. And again, our colony isn't in the middle of the woods or we don't have a whole bunch of tall grass for a raccoon or something to like sneak up. Everything is wide and flat and open and close to the house and close to the dogs. So I'm very confident that the rabbits will be perfectly safe. So those are my thoughts and feelings and ideas about my current colony design. It is definitely by far my favorite. Even if it is a bit smaller than I would have liked, we ended up running out of floor pallets. If there were more, obviously I would make a bigger colony, but I'm still happy with the size we have. The wood floor is great. The open air system is great. The little shelf is great. The south facing nature of the colony is not so great, but very easily dealt with. And overall, I am very happy with my recently finished project. Hopefully this gave you some ideas if you are going to build a colony or wanting to change your colony, things to do and things not to do. And whatever colony design you end up choosing, I hope you love yours as much as I love mine. Thanks for watching!